try to bring them into the fold of Israel until the Hebron massacre and then they could no longer do it. So then the national narrative changed. The Fehalim, the farmers, became the what? The Palestinians that are rounded up and still enslaved. So let's get this right. So let's get this right. Those who say they are Jews are not, but are in fact the synagogue of Satan. Is that what the scripture says? Are we allowed to read our scriptures and quote that verse? Or is that politically incorrect? The prime minister and president of the state of Israel, they said it. I'm just quoting what they said before the Hebron massacre and history was revised. It makes me sick. What is black is white. What is up is down. The Fehalim are now revised to be Palestinians, to be Arabian immigrants who mysteriously came to Israel in the 19th century to an almost empty land as the Zionist economy of the 20th century developed. It attracted more of these non-Jewish laborers. That's your modern revisionist history. You see, the Romans didn't forcibly deport the Jews from their homeland and there was no voluntary return to it. Only when the borders of the United States, Britain, Babylon and Europe were closed after the Second World War did the Khazars masquerading as the Jews return to mandatory Palestine. You see, this is so important because our whole political world rallies around this lie. And in fact, our beloved brethren in the Christian church have been misguided by Christian Zionism to believe this lie and have been fleeced of billions of dollars in doing so. How do I know? I used to be a Christian Zionist. Loved it. Loved it because I believed too. I lived in Israel when I was 18 years old. I've been to Israel many times. I loved it until I started to read the scriptures. And I started to go back before the Hebron massacre and read history. But when you start to do that, people come against you. And they start to call you names. Because to call you names, they can try and silence your voice. And most people don't have the backbone to keep on going. You see, that's the difference. I grew up in a society where if you push, I'll push back. And if you push again, I'll push back harder. And you can try and throw me away in boarding school and silence my voice. And I'll go to the library and read and I'll push back even more. You see... Yahweh has called his Kedoshim to be the voice. We are to be the voice in the wilderness, no matter what the cost is, even at your head becoming a platter dish. We are to be the voice in the wilderness. That is what this life is about. Not the status quo, but being that voice that cries out when the world is is peddling lies and tyranny. It's really about the Israel memory merchants. The settling Jewish masses weren't the direct descendants of the children of Israel. It's an anti-Semitic myth of the wandering Jew that Zionism harnessed for their own good measure, right? They took that anti-Semitic myth of the wandering Jew and now they're like, yes, we are the wandering Jew. And even Ben-Gurion uses it for his own political expediency. Do you see what they did? 
It's the anti-Semitic myth of the wandering Jew that was in turn encouraged by the Zionist lobby, knowing this myth would provide moral legitimacy to the settlement of the exiled Jewish people nation in a land inhabited by others from time immemorial. Let's look at the fruit of a man who followed in Ben-Gurion's footsteps, because by their fruit you shall know them. Yitzhak Greenbaum, Zionist Minister of the Interior under Ben-Gurion, he said this, Concerning using communal money to save the Jews, now, he's talking about saving the Jews out of World War II Germany. No, and no, and no. Zionism comes first. That's the fruit of following David Ben-Gurion. No, we don't save people from Germany, leave them. Because Zionism comes first, because what happens there is going to be the catalyst to thrust us into the land. Because then we'll have the sympathy of the world. And they will literally eat whatever we serve them up out of our hands. And there will be billions of dollars of repreations for generations. Billions and trillions of dollars worth. My third question, how does the Zionism of the 19th century compare to the Zionism of Scripture? It's a valid question, isn't it? Let's answer this question by seeing if the state of Israel qualifies as the Zion of Scripture or is it just the Zionism of a madman called Herzl? What is the birthright in Scripture? What is the birthright? The birthright in Scripture. And there's an organization by the state of Israel called what? What's it called? It's called birthright, right? But what is the birthright? Scripture tells us the birthright is the land. And where do you think this comes from? The Malkitzedic covenants of promise Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, Yahweh said to Avram, Get out of your country, and from your mishpocha, your family, and from your other's bayit, his, your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Then, if you turn to Bereshit, Genesis 15, verse 18, In the same day, Yahweh made a Brit, a covenant with Avram, saying, To your Zerah, to your seed, have I given this land. To your seed have I given this land. It's really the connection of Israel and the Malkitzedic priesthood. Because Avraham entered into this land covenant 400 years prior to the establishment of of the Levitical order. 400 years prior to the establishment of the Levitical order or priesthood. When Avraham offered up his tithe to Malkitzedek, it was under the Malkitzedek order of priesthood, was it not? The land covenant, listen, the land covenant of Israel was always administered under who? Malkitzedek. The land covenant of Israel was always administered under Malkitzedek, never under Levi. That's why under Melech Dawid, under King David and the Levitical priesthood, greater Israel was never fulfilled, was it? Never. Because the promise was given to Avraham. The promise was under the Malkitzedic covenant and it can only be fulfilled by the administration of the Malkitzedic priesthood. Yahweh told Avraham that he would be the father of many nations and Yaakov, Jacob, whose name is Israel, that from him would come a company of nations. You see, Judah has its place. Judah provided the king, Yahusha. And Joseph was the what? He had the Malkitzedic 
royal garment upon him that his brother